Hi everyone, this is Trevor from Astro Backyard. It's a Monday night and it's clear tonight. And even though I work in the morning, I'm going to be staying up very late and getting very little sleep. That's the way it goes, but uh, I know I'll be looking back in the winter when we go two straight months of clouds. Uh, and if I think back and say to myself, I went to bed at a decent time on a clear night during the summer when it's beautiful out and I could be imaging in shorts and t-shirt, I will be extremely upset with myself. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to be out tonight. Also, uh, the Milky Way, the core Milky Way objects are out, some of the best stuff uh, in the entire sky. So tonight I'm going to be imaging the Trifid Nebula. I'm going to be putting more time onto that subject. I'm going to take my own advice from my video about uh, the five ways to improve your astrophotography and sink at least three hours into this before uh, doing my final process. I've done a few processes and shared it already, but uh, I, I want to do this object justice. So I'm going to be setting up in the backyard tonight. Thank you for all the support so far. Uh, we're at almost 1,000 subscribers, which is uh, quite incredible, and uh, I really appreciate all the support. Uh, so I'll try to answer a lot of the questions I've been getting in the comments of those videos uh, tonight. I'll try to throw a few of those in there as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you stay with me for a night of astrophotography on a Monday night. I don't think I ever formally introduced the newest member to the Astro Backyard family on this vlog yet, so I'd like to introduce you to the Explore Scientific 102mm carbon fiber apochromatic refractor. So this telescope is an air-spaced triplet apochromatic refractor. The aperture is f7 so still quite fast uh, with a focal length of 714 millimeters. Uh, it's actually quite a bit beefier than my uh, 80 millimeter uh, Explore Scientific scope. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's uh, a solid performer, you could say. Uh, it, it is very comparable to the uh, build quality of the 80 ED, but uh, with, with a little more aperture. This is my first telescope purchase in five years, so I wanted to make sure it was the right one. Uh, it wasn't cheap by any sense of the word, uh, but it's an investment. I'll have this scope for a long time. And uh, yeah, so it's the carbon fiber model, which is uh, just basically means it's a little bit lighter. You can see the, uh, the carbon fiber texture to it there. It, it looks really slick, I think, anyway. Uh, but uh, the, having it uh, under 10 pounds makes it that much more portable and means I'm just going to use it that much more. So here's a tip for anyone that uh, is looking for a planetarium to help plan their night of imaging. This software is called Stellarium. Uh, a lot of people use it and for good reason. It's free. I have it set to my location right now. You can uh, speed time up throughout the night. Uh, there's the Milky Way, just gorgeous. Uh, not obviously that bright from my location, but uh, so then you can zoom in and you can see the Lagoon Nebula there. Uh, there's a lot of great features to it. One of the ones I like is this ocular view. Uh, so let's say I pick the Lagoon Nebula here. Let me just focus on that. And then I can set it to my uh, particular telescope, which I've put in here. Here's my 80 millimeter scope view. And here's the 102. So it's nice for uh, framing things up and to know if the object will fit uh, in your image or not. Uh, you can kind of get a preview of it in here. So that's a really good, nice feature. But again, the, the program's called Stellarium. Uh, and it, it is free, you can download it. I have it running on my uh, PC here and uh, I wouldn't do a night of imaging without it. So I got a question uh, on one of the comments on one of my videos about the flattener I use uh, to go with my refractor. 
um, and I've been using the same one for years now because this one also worked well with the uh, 80 millimeter, but it is the William Optics uh, 0.8 times flattener three. Uh, it's a two inch flattener reducer. Uh, and it's meant for uh, refractors from, I think it's F4 through F7. Uh, I'm, don't quote me on that, but uh, it worked well with the 80 millimeter, which was F6, and of course this one now that's F7. So it's a nice two inch, two inch adapter, uh, which matches nicely with the two inch focuser on this scope. Uh, and again, like I said, I've been using it for years and it hasn't screwed me wrong. Okay, I think I've spent enough time in this garage yapping about things, so uh, I'm going to get out under the stars now and begin imaging the Triffid Nebula. There is a crescent moon setting right now that sets at about 10.30, 11 o'clock. Uh, not a whole lot of moon glow coming from that though, so uh, I'll pretty much be up and running within the next half hour. This dog will stay out all night long with me just to hang out even though it's so boring when I've got the telescope set up. He will randomly run through the yard looking for a raccoon or a squirrel which he does find sometimes but uh, he is a good companion to have for astrophotography. My astro dog Rudy. So if you've ever heard the, ter the term live view focusing for astrophotography. Um, it's been around for a long time. This old camera, my 450D, is a very basic DSLR and uh, when it's hooked up through the scope uh, and you go into live view mode, uh, you can use the five times zoom and I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen but there's actually a, a star jiggling around there on the screen and I can zoom in again and then change the focus and get that star in focus using the live view and you can only do this on very bright stars for the live view to pick up and uh, so it's on manual mode at ISO 1600 uh, at 10 times live view or 10 times zoom and uh, it's a good way to focus your stars if you're worried about dew and condensation on your telescope objective, uh, try running a little fan, or in this case a big fan, uh, next to your scope and just have a really slight breeze blowing on your gear all night long and uh, that'll protect it from uh, doing up with moisture. Uh, it's no fun to come out to your scope at, uh, to check on it at 2 in the morning and to realize it's covered in dew and your last 15 frames are shot. Uh, so if you have power uh, say in your backyard, hook up a little fan and just leave that blowing on it. That's if you don't have a, a dew heater or dew straps. It works pretty well. I'm just taking some test exposures to make sure I've got the Trifid Nebula in the center of the frame. So this is using Backyard EOS or EOS. Uh, and I'm at ISO 1600 and this will be a 10 second exposure. I've, I've been moving it around a little bit and I'm pretty sure I'm dead center. So again, I'll be adding to some previous exposures on this object. Uh, I've got about two hours in, and uh, I'd like to get another hour or so tonight. So here it comes. So you can actually see it right in here. There's the Triffid Nebula. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but uh, it's there. Okay, we're going to get PhD guiding going. We are going to connect the guide camera, which is the Mead DSi-2, and connect my mount through the GP-USB 
adapter. Uh, if you want to know what that looks like, you can watch my video on uh, my astrophotography equipment for Deep Sky. Uh, so that's connecting to the mount. Uh, boom, connected. We're going to close that. We are going to start looping the image through the DSI. Uh, it's already in focus. I see a few stars there. And I'm going to choose this star and begin the uh, alignment process. Well, this is going to take about three minutes. And we are guiding. And now let's start our imaging session. So I'm going to take a light frame. My target name is Trifid Nebula. ISO 1600, duration. I'm going to do more three minute exposures. This is a sweet spot for my sky exposures. I'm going to take 20, which will hour which will equal about an hour, an hour exactly. Uh, I'm going to turn dither on. We are off to the races. 